Right, welcome to this first lecture on, uh, first of a series of lectures on British geology. Um, I'm going to start off just by using um, this map, which is the BGS Maker Map. You can get this uh, on free online <coughs> on the BGS website, and it's, you can manipulate the map to give an interactive approach to British geology. So I'm going to use this just to talk about the geological framework for Britain overall and then focus in on the rock classes. And then as the lectures progress, we're going to look at a range of different geological uh, topics working our way through from very old to very young rocks in Britain. I hope it gives you an idea about British geology and enables you to tackle some t um, tasks which are either within or outside the A-level syllabus. So I'm going to start off just by looking at this map and the way it's been drawn up. We've got the map itself, we've got a key on the left. And if we look at the key on the left, it's separated into the different rock classes. So we've got the orange and the burgundy at the bottom, which are the igneous rocks, the orange being intrusive and the burgundy being extrusive. We've then got metamorphic rocks, which are uh, this purple and orange here. And then we have sediments over the rest of the key, and they are going in age, from Neo-Proterozoic right the way through, up through the Phanerozoic, and ending up at the Cenozoic at the top. And what you can do with this map online is you can uh, check these tick boxes, and you uh, either export or import different parts of British geology, so you can get an idea of what the outcrop patterns are like as you go across the country. What I often do, well, I always do actually, is take away a regional guide to geology with me whenever I travel through Britain, and then I can see how the landscape is changing and why that is. It doesn't look like looking at a skeleton underneath the flesh and skin of a body. You know what's giving you that shape because you know what's underpinning the, uh, the shapes that you can see and look at. So we've got the different rock classes here. Let's just look at the rock ages. So as I said there, we've got low protozoic for Precambrian there. We've got Paleozoic, lower Paleozoic, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, upper Paleozoic, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian. Then we've got Mesozoic, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and then Cenozoic at the top. Let's now focus in on the rock classes and where they happen in Britain. So if we look for the colours for the igneous rocks, we can see there are concentrations of a lot of igneous rocks in north and west Scotland. We've then got igneous centres, for example in Dumfries and Galloway, in the Cheviots, in the Lake District, in Snowdonia, and extrusive rocks which are just poking through the cover in the southwest peninsula in Cornwall and Devon down there. So there are patches of igneous rock throughout the country, but there's definitely more in the north and west than there are elsewhere down here. <clears throat> if we look at the metamorphic rocks now, let's see where they are, and you can see that they are concentrated almost wholly in north and west Scotland. There are patches elsewhere, but Scotland is the place to go if you want metamorphic rocks which have been metamorphosed to at least biotite grade or higher. If we now look at the rest of the map, we can see that it is covered by sediment. All of these colours here, broadly speaking, are sedimentary rocks, and there's a pattern. The further south and east you go, the younger the rocks get. So that means that the rocks are almost certainly dipping overall towards the south and the east. In other words, they're tilted up on end, and as you pro progress further down towards London and Kent, you are moving into younger and younger strata. As you go to the north and west, you get into older and older strata, and then you actually run out. This is all metamorphic here. You might just be able to see that there are some Proterozoic sediments, that's the Torridonian sandstones in the northwest highland, and they have not been metamorphosed but they are a rarity. The rest of that uh, area is largely metamorphic and igneous rocks. Let's just look at the effects that that has on Britain as a whole. The older and harder the rocks are, the more mountainous the scenery. So the big igneous and metamorphic areas of Scotland are largely high ground. 
The areas of high ground in England and Wales can be picked out. The Cheviots, Dumfries and Gallery again, the Lake District, Snowdonia, and even down to the uh, Preselles down here, uh, and finally South West England with the Granites. All of those are areas of high ground. All of them are um, high relief and also high rainfall, as I know to my cost from years of field work, and that is because the rocks are older, more resistant, and therefore more difficult to erode. Let's see what happened, what effect that has on population density. This is geography now, well, I'm geology, but the two are interrelated. So the population density is higher in the south and the east of England, and the reason for that is basically threefold. One, you're closer to the, uh, the uh, continent for trade. Two, you are on areas of fertile land, so there's a better food supply. Three, it's easier to build on flatter land in general. Where you find settlements, centres of population density away from the south and east, it tends to be for one of two reasons. Either we're looking at an industrial heritage, so on the coalfield sites here, or you're looking at trade and ports. One of those two, two reasons will be in place. Communications between those settlements, settlements is rather more difficult because it has to go between areas of high land communications in the south and east tends to be more straightforward and therefore economic growth through history has been higher as well. Let's just look at the water supply. In the north and west, rocks tend to be hard and impermeable and relative relief is high. Therefore, water storage for human consumption will be dominantly on the surface. There will be a lot of, a lot of reservoirs and in Scotland, and Wales, there is hydroelectric power as well. As you come towards the south and east, the rocks become softer, the relative relief is lower, and they are permeable. And therefore, although the water supply still comes a lot from rivers, there's an even bigger amount in aquifers, water storage in permeable rocks below ground. And that's particularly true in the chalk aquifer, around London here, which is the biggest centre of population, having around uh, 15 to 20% of Britons living in that area. If we then just look at uh, building stones, finally, <coughs> in the north and west, as you would expect, building stones have high load-bearing strength, and therefore is quarrying of that for use on roads, civil engineering projects, and uh, field boundaries, and also building for human habitation, and that's happened throughout history. In the south and east, you have a problem. There is no hard rock, generally, so that you have to make manufactured building materials, so, for example, bricks, which start to be manufactured in Tudor time, and those are made out of clay, and there's plenty of clay available in the south and east England. One particular note, just to finish off, and that is large infrastructure period, uh, projects which are built in south and east England, for example, HS2 and Crossrail, which are centred on the centres of population, need high load-bearing strength rock. Where are you going to get it from? You get it from the nearest available location, which is actually not too far from Salisbury. The super quarries in the Carboniferous Limestone and the Mendips are where a lot of the materials come from for those big projects. So HS2, Olympic Park, um, Crossrail, and also the high-speed rail line down to the Channel Tunnel, all were supplied from those super quarries which are in the Mendips, a short distance away from Salisbury. The last point before I finish. These old rocks, igneous and metamorphic rocks, are present in the south and east. And in fact they poke through in places like the Malverns and the Longmind and also Charnwood Forest, which is in Leicestershire. But they're covered by a thick sequence of sediments. All of this lot covers over them so that you need some special circumstances always faulting and sometimes major unconformities to bring those older basement rocks to the surface. On the other hand, in the north 
and west, the basement rocks are closer to the surface and therefore the cover has either never been deposited on top in the first place or it has been eroded away. And of course one of the things which increased the rate of erosion over the last 10 to 15,000 years is the fact that the ice sheet has been removed from North Scotland and Wales and the Lake District and as it's been removed the land has undergone what's called isostatic rebound. It has lifted as the weight has been taken off it. And if you lift land, it gets, the surface gets eroded. And that means all of these cover rocks have tended to be stripped off where they had been deposited in the first place. Right, I hope that gives you some, uh, some thinking material. I'm going to put a task on Insight for you to follow up after this lecture. Do have a look at the BGS um, website and that map. It's really good. And I'll see you soon for the next lecture.